Hello everyone, welcome back to Brathekers. So today we are diving into a brand new ERS ATS 2025 update on interstitial pneumonia classification. So the topic which we'll be covering in detail includes a change in the focus from purely idiopathic IP to a broader unified classification, including the secondary causes. There is addition of new terminologies like BIP, that is bronchiolocentric interstitial pneumonia, AMP, alveolar macrophage pneumonia, and idiopathic DAD, that is diffuse alveolar damage. They have also formalized subclassification of IP as interstitial or alveolar filling disorders. They also incorporate diagnostic confidence, and they have also highlighted the molecular and imaging innovation with research priorities. So if you have been following the older 2002 and 2013 classification, this update brings some exciting and important changes. So coming to 2002 classification, which gave us the first structured approach, though it was an IPF centric approach and it was mainly limited to idiopathic IPs, it classified IP, uh, ILDs as IPF, non-IPF and unclassifiable IP. Non-IPF included non-specific interstitial pneumonia, acute interstitial pneumonia, lymphocytic interstitial pneumonia, cryptogenic organizing pneumonia, respiratory bronchiolitis ILD, and desquamative interstitial pneumonia. 2013 continues the same with few changes. First, they divided it into major IIP, rare IIP, and unclassifiable IIP. There was addition of a new term, which is PPFE, that is pleuroparenchymal fibroelastosis. And they emphasized moreover NSIP as being the major pattern, major IP pattern. Coming to this 2025 guidelines, so they have included the secondary causes prior, priorly before making them as idiopathic or primary. They have also added the new terms which we discussed, that is BIP, DAD, and AMP. They have also classified it into interstitial disorder and alveolar filling disorders. And among the alveolar filling, they have divided, they have also rare alveolar filling disorders, which include acute eosinophilic pneumonia, chronic eosinophilic pneumonia, secondary PAP, and lipoid pneumonia. Then they have other other includes basically unclassifiable ILD and the combination of secondary or primary IP with the combined part. So this 2025 guidelines, they divide them into uh, primary, secondary. Secondary causes are also included. More of disease prevalence and behavior has been enrolled in. Interstitial versus alveolar filling pattern and combined pattern has been discussed. So this whole slides tell you everything about the new guidelines. Also there you can see the color uh, coding. What this color coding tells. So the color intensity of each cell indicates the timing that each pattern was introduced. So the lighter shades they are more recently introduced pattern as compared to the darker shades. The gray boxes above they are the category headers. And what did the individual pattern uh, came to known as in the serial classification? They are connected by these dashed leads. Now, one of the smartest classification which was done for IP is that they have categorized it into interstitial and alveolar filling disorder. Now, this classification has been done based upon where the main problem is. If it is in the interstitium or it is in the alveoli. If it is in the interstitium, it is either fibrotic or non fibrotic. It includes UIP, NSIP, BIP mainly. Other patterns could be DAD, PPFE, and LIP. Coming to the imaging, so craniocaudal distribution, the lower predominance seen in UIP, NSIP, and LIP. PPFE shows predominantly an upper predominance and the other two left BIP and DAD they show a diffuse pattern. Then coming to the distribution so peripheral distribution is seen in UIP, NSIP and PPFE. Subplural sparing is seen in NSIP which is the characteristic feature of NSIP on radiology. 
diffuse with the peribronchovascular component can be seen in BIP and LIP. Then you can look for the other features which helps you in aiding uh, towards the diagnosis. So honeycombing, of course UIP. Now this is the major change. If you see the T density sign, you won't call it as HP pattern. So HP is now a multidisciplinary diagnosis. It is a clinical diagnosis. It is not a pattern nor a histology pattern, neither a radiology pattern. This pattern is now on radiology called as BIP. This is bronchiocentric interstitial pneumonia. Then if you see consolidation, it is it could be BPFE. Cyst usually seen in LIP, GGO and septal thickening in DAT. Coming to the alveolar filling disorders, so basically classify what fills the alveoli. If it is macrophages, it could be RBLD and AMP. If it is fibroblast, it could be OP. If it is proteinaceous material, it could be PAP. If it is eosinophils, it could be AEP, CEP which all comes in the rare alveolar filling pneumonias. Then coming to the imaging consideration, depending upon the whether it is multifocal, unifocal or diffuse. Then consolidation, if the density is more of consolidation, it is either OP or EP. If it is more of fat, then it is lipoid pneumonia. Ground glassing, mostly in AMP and PAP. Other associated features, of course, emphysema, more towards AMP. Now, AMP has been uh, uh, has been introduced as a new terminology and in place of DIP. So initially, it was called as desquamative interstitial pneumonia, but we were studying smokers macrophages. These are seen usually in the histology. So it was all related to macrophages, and there was no desquamation. Based on this, they have changed the name of DIP to AMP. Septal thickening, of course, in PAP, aspiration bronchial obstruction in lipoid pneumonia can be seen. So, combining all these radiological, clinical, molecular, pathological findings, a multidisciplinary decision is taken, and then you come to a clinical diagnosis. Now, this uh, this figure basically tells you the morphological pattern of interstitial and alveolar filling disorders and their associated clinical radiological and pathological diagnosis. If you see here, secondary etiologies, they are listed before the primary or the idiopathic etiology. And the main aim to do so is to tell you that the underlying cause exclusion has to be done before concluding or making a diagnosis of primary or idiopathic. Then uh, they also say that now, is not limited to idiopathic IPs anymore. Secondary causes are also included, which include HP, CTD, drug-induced ILD, a single unified classification they have given. And uh, basically, they also tells that initially, some of the diseases like RBILD, it has idiopathic causes obviously and the name of ipf which itself says idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis can have some underlying causes so just to clarify all this they have made it into secondary and primary so again the summary of what we have learned till now. So BIP, it is a new terminology replacing HP pattern on CT and histopathology. Idiopathic DAD, of course, a new name for AIP. And AMP, a new name for BIP. Coming to BIP, it can be fibrotic, it can be non-fibrotic. Here is the non-fibrotic, here is the fibrotic or the three density sign. These are the clinical features, these are the radiological features, and these are the histological features of BIP. Non-fibrotic usually include acute subacute onset of respiratory or systemic symptoms. Fibrotic, they have a chronic onset with variable risk of progression. Of course, there is no clear age or sex predilection, but positive exposure history for HP remains associated with the antigens. Coming to the radiology, so non-fibrotic, there can be mosaic attenuation, central lobular GGO, air trapping, 
in fibrotic again three density sign then coming to the histology so bronchiolocentric chronic inflammation has to be there for non fibrotic it can be or cannot be there in fibrotic bip here you will see more of fibrosis and peribronchiolar metaplasia on histopathology they have classified op as classical op acute fibrinous organizing pneumonia and psychiatrical organizing pneumonia they have given their uh, differentials as idiopathic and secondary in all the three categories the histology findings they are little bit changed because in classical op uh, if it is cryptogenic you will see mild chronic interstitial inflammation if it is secondary causes the inflammation will be more prominent then hyaline membranes will be absent in acute fibrinous organizing pneumonia and in the psychiatrical of course as the name says psychiatrization so there will be dense fibrous bands there will be dendiform ossification so the ct features and time and space related changes have been discussed here so again the two key areas first is the separation into interstitial and alveolar filling both on the basis of histological and radiology where is the injury done interstitial further divided into fibrotic and non fibrotic they have also added uh, data of uh, the benefit of anti fibrotic uh, therapy both in interdenim and perfenidone in patients with ppf regardless of the underlying diagnosis and therefore they have supported that the disease behavior concept and they have suggested a specific criteria for objectively defining the disease progression so coming to the diagnostic approach it was already there in the previous classification telling more than 90% as the confident diagnosis 51 to 89% says it to be provisional so here you have to do more of tests to conclude to a final diagnosis and less than 50% it stays unclassifiable ild so clinician often uses a threshold of 70% to proceed with treatment decision without any biopsy just like a ct showing a clear uip pattern you can go away with the treatment and there is no need of biopsy so this structured confidence scale now they have made it valid both for radiology as well as histology this is one of the chart that they have added they have updated uh, where the field is heading so we are looking at uh, some molecular tools like photon counting ct endobronchial oct and even artificial intelligence intelligence in imaging though they are not ready for routine clinical use yet but they are coming so classification must remain flexible and evolve as science advances so this is the last slide differentiating the new changes compared to the last 2013 classification so it mainly focused on iips they have focused on secondary causes also major patterns they have been changed terminologies have been changed hp the major change now it is no more a radiology or a pathology pattern it is basically a multidisciplinary diagnosis sub classification of course interstitial and alveolar filling disorders they do they recognize the concept of progressive disease but ppf has been more emphasized here diagnostic confidence though it was there but it was not formally integrated it has now been integrated both in radiology and pathology molecular markers 2013 limited application but discussed now there is more update on the genetics and the serum biomarkers imaging advances as we discussed and the research priorities so basically this is a big step forward in making ild classification clearer and more clinically useful thanks for watching don't forget to like share and subscribe to breathacres for more dives into pulmonary medicine thank you